Okay, Micah chapter 6. Hear now what the Lord saith. That ought to just be, you know, taken for granted. But it's not by all of us. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, old mountains. It's amazing how many times God, through the prophets, he, he addresses the mountains. He addresses the hills, the trees, nature. And there's one thing that you come across reading your Bible, dealing with people. This is something Christians don't learn. They don't witness. They don't deal with people. You don't read your Bible. Nature listens to God more than man does. The clouds, the sun, the moon, the stars, the animals obey God. And they have been from time to Genesis 1. God said, let there be light. Boom. No question, no doubt. Let there be fish. Boom. Let there be birds. Boom. Let there be trees and apples have apple trees and oranges have orange trees. Boom. Baby cows. Grass. Let us make man. Boom. There he is. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Plunk, plunk. How quick did Israel hear God's voice? All the signs in Egypt. The voice of God speaking from Mount Sinai. And how quick did they fail God? Hear ye mountains, the Lord's controversy. Ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people. He will plead with Israel. Now there is no other people that God says his people. Not Americans. Israel. And God's people, God says, I've got a problem with you. Now, the bride of Jesus, the church, you say you're, you're rich, you're wonderful, you're great, you're poor, met you, original, naked. I'm standing outside your door, I'm knocking. Oh, how great we are. How wonderful we are. Man, what's going on here? O oh, my people, Israel, what have I done unto thee? Now watch this. Wherein have you weary, wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. God's saying, okay, if I have been the problem, come on. Bring your evidence. Testify. What you do in court. I think God's going to, since time has stopped, I think God's going to give everybody at the Great White Throne Judgment, I think He's going to give them all time. Go ahead, produce your cause. Oh, Black Lives Matter. Really? Uh, look at my skin color. It's brown, it's not black. No, it's not European. No, it's not Italian. Scriptures say I came unto my own. Right? My own received me not. My own were, the, were Jewish. Read Luke chapter 3. Read, read the genealogy of my mother. I'm talking about this is Jesus speaking. Oh, oh, you were brought up in the ghettos. Oh, gee. Uh, 
were you born in a stable? When you were born, did all the government want you dead? Did the, did the leader of your nation kill everybody about two or three years old? God's saying, what did I do has caused your problem? I brought thee up from the land of Egypt. That's the God. How do you know which God? The God that brought the Jews out of Egypt. You're not to have an American God. You're not to have an Italian God. You're sure not to have a Southern God. You're to have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you don't have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you don't have God. Hallelujah. Oh, you got the God of Abram, Ishmael. No, Allah ain't the God. God that brought Israel out and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. You see, Israel were servants in Egypt. Such is the complaint of the Africans complaining about being in America. You can go back. There are airplanes, there are ships going back to Africa. You can go. I don't see you hopping on a plane. I don't see you hopping on a ship. Because you know you won't get the freedom in your country where you came from that you get in America. You want to talk about, you know, the persecution of the African America in, in America. But well, let's do the study of Exodus chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. Until God had to kill the firstborn. And then even after that, they went ch chasing after Israel at the Red Sea. I sit, now watch this one. I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. God sent them. Well, you know, Moses said, well, I can't talk, I can't. Okay, but, you know, God could handle that argument, but God said, okay, fine, I'll send Aaron. Aaron will be your spokesman. And it's kind of funny how Moses took over. And Miriam, she was a prophetess. You know, I know women can't preach, but then say they can't do nothing at all, because there's Miriam. Oh, my people again, Israel. Remember how Bar Balak, king of Moab, consulted and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him in Shittim and Gilgal? I can't curse them. They're blessed. Oh, come on. Let's try this mountain. Come on. Let's offer this offer. Come on. You got, come on, you got to see these people. You got to curse me, these people. I ain't cursing nobody. God says don't curse me. That you may know the righteousness of the Lord. God's saying, okay, if I've been this burden to you, I've been this protection to you. I've given you manna. I've given you that water that came from that rock that followed you. I mean, you, you didn't take for the fact is that every time you turned around, that rock was there. Wait, <laughs> what the Bible said. You didn't take look to that cloud and that fiery pillar in, at night. You see, you know, they got to the point is all our troubles, all our problems are because of God. And they were doing that in the wilderness. Come on, let's, build a, let's go back to Egypt. No water, no food, our enemies. That's what the world does today. You know, we blame God. 
The insurance company is an act of God. Well, I might read my Bible. It could be an act of God. It could be an act of the devil. It could be act, an act of man. Or it could be sin. I don't know how many years it is. I've been saved since April 1987. I've come to the conclusion I'm not too quick to, bring, to blame God. I ain't too quick to blame the devil. I might blame myself. I mean, some, some people, they're out, they blame God. No, Some people, they blame the Christians, blame the devil. And the devil's up there before the throne of God, like, honestly can say, I didn't, not me, God. And one third of the angels, like, they're nodding their head, yeah. And God's like, I know. I, I hate to say it, Satan, but you and I are, are agreement on this one. What's going to happen to that Christian, to that person that wrongly accuses the devil? The devil's called the accuser of the brethren. And there are Christians that accuse the devil. There are Christians that accuse God. There are Christians that accuse other Christians. Wherefore, where was, excuse me, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? You're going to come to God, you're coming to God on your knees, bowed down. I had one guy one time I worked with, you know, professing Christian. After he stole a lot of money from the company, I found out later. Bezel. I'm going to walk up to Jesus, high five Jesus, my friend Jesus, my man Jesus. No, you're not. You get these men that are in prison. Well, oh, my man Jesus, here we going to. No, you're not. Now, here's the other side of the coin. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Doesn't that sound right? Isn't that the law? With the calves of a year old? Michael, what did you say calves for? Because there's two golden calves in Israel right now. He could have said oxen. He could have said sheep. He could have said lamb. He could have said uh, uh, goats. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Okay, there's the rams. Psalm says those are those animals on the on the mountains and the hills are his. With ten thousand rivers of oil. That's a lot of olive trees. That's a lot of olives. That's the only oil acceptable to God. All right, come on, God. If I bring the calves, if I bring the rams, I bring the oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? There ain't nowhere in the law. That's what the heathen are doing with Molech. The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. And, and you know, there's a standardized joke in the world, you know, I offer my firstborn son. It comes out of Micah 6 7. God, I'll give you the animals. Psalm says they're not yours, they're his. God, I'll give you the rivers of oil. You ain't going to have much oil if you keep on sinning and you keep on despising God. You're going to dry them up. Your children, they're going to be handed over to the enemy. Assyria's coming. Babylon's coming. 
Nowhere in the, nowhere at no time did God ask, row, or said, give me your children. You say, what about Abraham and Isaac? God from the beginning was not going to allow Abraham to kill that boy. Never. At the point where Abraham was going to swing that knife, God knew he was going to. You know, God knew the faithfulness of Abraham. He knew Abraham was going to stop that knife. He knew how much he loved Isaac. I'm for sure that, that Satan would have had a little extra little wad of wax in Abraham's ear that there was no time for Abraham to say, what? <laughs> right, show, me, show me somewhere else in the Bible where God told them to give up their sons. I'm not talking about Molech. I'm talking about God, Jehovah. Nowhere. And that was a battle between Satan and God. I guarantee somewhere Satan walked up to God and said, Hey, listen, look at my people. They're sacrificing their children to me. God's like, yeah, watch watch me. Let me find a man that loves his, his son, legitimately loves his son, his legitimate child. I ain't talking about people that are messing around and having affairs and, and, and the priests having affairs with the nuns and all that. That's a Catholic church. I'll show you a man that loves his son. And then after Abraham and, and the story of Isaac, and they walked down that mountain together, father and son, and God turned to Satan and said, that's going to be my son. Where's your son, buddy? You ain't got no son. And if you had a son, you wouldn't give it for them. You wouldn't give nothing for your people. Did you forget Satan, that mountain where they were, that very spot that they were, that's where my son's going to die. I showed a preview of what's going to happen on Calvary. I showed you my love. You can't do that, Satan. You have no love. You have lust. What do you think abortions are today? What about, what about I, I can talk about it, I'm out of it now. What about the Southern Baptist Church? How many of those sexual perverts, sexual sins, call it what they are, don't, don't cross them over because you're, they're your own people. How many of those people committed or involved in abortion that the, that the Southern Baptists are preaching against because that woman got pregnant? Yeah. You don't think one case out of all the cases where there was no abortion. Yeah, that was swept underneath the rug too, I bet. Watch. He has shown me, excuse me, he has shown the old man. He's talking to Israel. Michael. What is good? It ain't man. There's none that do it good. Solomon wrote that. Solomon's been long gone dead. What does the Lord require of thee? Firstborn? Rivers of oil? The calf? Sacrifice. But to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly before thy God. They never learned that. When they brought that woman caught in adultery, where was the man? The law said both the adulterer and the adulteress. The law says she should be stoned. Well, that's mercy. Jesus did justly. He was out the first sin, him cast the first stone. Jesus done merciful. 
Woman, where's your accuser? They ain't here no more. Go and sin no more. And he showed them to walk humbly before that God. Jesus had no pride. And yet he won every argument. You check the, the, the gospel. Every single question they asked him, he had the proper right answer. Every time he asked them a question, they had no answer. Jesus never walked through Drew. I'm the God. I'm the God. <laughs> Me. And but what does what does the Gospel of John tells us about Jesus? Picturing Jesus as Jehovah. I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. I am the door. What is that am? I am. God. And he said it without pride. Now, let's look at our churches. I am the pastor. We got the great pastor. We got the great church. Well, it's true. No, it's not. You say you're rich. You say you're miserable, wretched, poor, blind. And Jesus is standing outside the door. You're doing justly. You're getting people to invite people to your church so you get more numbers. That's not justly. Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel. Mercy? Oh, you're telling me what we're doing is pagan? Oh, let me sit down with you as a pastor and let me call our deacons. Our church official, let's sit down and hear what you have to say about this paganism. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city. How? Isaiah, Micah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. You've had Elijah, Elisha. Noah was 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 a voice. He preached. Um, Enoch. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. Well, no, we're not talking about worldly wisdom. Hear ye the rod. And who has appointed it? Well, for the nation of Israel, that rod, last night in the chapter, was, was upon Jesus' cheek. That rod, when Jesus comes back, the line of the tribe of Jews is going to be upon Israel's enemies. You know, the, the Christian goes, Yea, though I walk in the valley, shall I death, I grip you, and I'm not trying to make fun of the scripture. I'm making fun of the Christian. That has nothing to do with you. That's Israel in the tribulation period. Thy rod and thy staff is Satan. Your typical Christian today doesn't even do nothing. Listen, Satan doesn't even yawn at today's Christian. Oh, that church there? You don't need to worry about that. And you got some Christians out there. You're you're in you're you're in hell, and all these alarm clocks start going on. What's going on? What's going on? This Christian just woke up. We've got demons and devils trying to, we got to stop them. That guy is trouble. Whitecliffe is trouble to us in hell. There. Are there any treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? What do you think the answer to that question is? And 
and the scant measure that is abominable. What about after the second advent of Jesus Christ? It'll be all gone. The wicked will be all gone. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances? With a bag of deceitful weights? So here is the revenue of wicked. And we're looking at the second advent. This is everything that has been by the mark of the beast. Selling and purchasing. And the killing of Jews. And deceit, listen, the power of the world is the Antichrist. You think he's, You think when you pull up to the gas station, you're crying about, you know, gas is too high. I haven't heard people cry that gasoline is going down. Hooray, President Biden is bringing the gasoline prices down. Yay! I haven't heard that. And gasoline has gone down. Oh, man, Christian, Mason, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. You know what I learned today? I, I, listen, I'm sorry to Donald Trump and his family with his wife dying. And that was tragic that she fell down and, and, and she said that she bruised her chest and died. That's tragic. I pray for the family. But I also learned that the reason how, I, I, I know how to say it, Viver, whatever name is, I will forgive me. But they got divorced. I learned that Donald Trump and, her, and she got divorced because Donald Trump's second wife, he was having an affair with this woman, his second wife, when he was married to the first wife. That's your Messiah? Baptist, some Baptist churches I know wouldn't even allow Donald Trump in the front door. Not to even count the three bankruptcies. Gasoline. I don't know how cheap it's going to be in the Antichrist. Life, but you go in there. And I, just, I want an even number. Let's say gasoline is going to be. I'm not saying it's going to be a dollar in the tribulation. But let's say a dollar a gallon. And you go in there and say, listen, I want 10 gallons here. The $10 bill, whatever. 10 marks. 10 marks in your forehead. Whatever, however it is. In the tribulation period, you're not going to get 10 gallons. You're going to be short. You go to the checkout with your mark and all that, and you get a pound of green beans. You ain't going to pay. And you ain't going to have a pound. You're going to be deceitful weight. And you find this all through the book of Proverbs. It's an abomination to God to have all these different ways. It's an abomination that they don't get their just... What they paid for. The tribulation is a abomination of God. For the rich men thereof are full of violence. That's the tribulation period. In the tribulation period, there is no middle class no more. You're either rich by the mark, or you're dirt poor because you won't receive the mark and you're Jewish. James talks about the rich man in many aspects as a sin. And you can't say that as far as J.C. Penney, a man that was rich and saved and gave his employees Wednesday night or midweek service off and time to go to church. And there are many other rich Christians in the church age I've heard of one guy who, who's had multiple companies, instead of tithing the 10%, he gave everything of one company to the Lord after paying his employees and the debts he owed for that company. Any profit he had, he gave it to the Lord and missionary. 
in the tribulation period, the rich man is going to be full of violence. The way he's going to get rich is by deceit. The inhabitants thereof have spoken lies. Well, there's their father, the Antichrist, the devil. There are trades today in America are known because they lie. Politicians, used car salesmen, practically any salesman. Now, I didn't say all of them, but I'm saying the trade. And their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. They will say anything and do anything to get you to sign on the dotted line or get the mark of the beast. Therefore also will I make thee sick and smite in thee. <laughs> COVID-19. All the plagues are going to happen according to the book of Revelation in the tribulation. And making thee desolate because of your sin. You're going to be alone because of your sin. And you're going to get no medication, no help, no professional help, unless you have that mark. And when you got the mark, you got all the... There, there's an animal that's going to come up in the tribulation period. When he strikes you with that tail as a scorpion, the Bible says you're going to want to die, but there is no death. And I've always said, my, my particular expression I use, my illustration many times over is, you go all the way top of the, the entire state building, you do the most beautiful swan dive on this road on the ground, and you hit that road, you're hit by 400 yellow cabs, and one, and six buses. You're lying there, in scrutiny, and you're still alive. And the ambulance comes along, if you got the mark, they put you in the ambulance, bring you to the hospital, and they can't do nothing for you. Because the doctors and the nurses are being struck by this animal. And if you don't have the mark, you're just left right there to keep being run over in traffic. Thou shalt eat, and but not be satisfied. Thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee. Get everything you want. And you, you come home at 5 o'clock, your neighbor comes home at 5 o'clock, and you look over, he, oh, i got to have that car. How dare he buy that brand new car? i got to have it. Coveting. Thou shalt take hold, but shall not deliver. You're going to order from your online everything you want. Your heart. Just put your hand under the beam of the computer. Where's my online delivery? It ain't coming. Why not? We're in the tribulation, brother. You think we're gonna we're, we're gonna mayhem everything that's going on so you can get your whatever you ordered? What about you? You're going to have an awful time of delivering to your boss in the tribulation period. What job did you get paid to do? And, you know, you just had a major earthquake. The highway to get you to work, you know, is closed. 
you got hell. You go to the water cooler and there's a nice good shade of bloody red. That which deliveries will I give up to the sword. War. But I forget if that's the second or third horse in Apocalypse. And in the tribulation period, of the Jews more especially, because it said, I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the word of God. Beheading the guillotine and the sword is coming back. The Muslims, Islam, oh, you know, they chopped off these people's head. They're getting you ready for the Antichrist. And the Jewish blood they're going to take up and they're going to bottle it and they're going to have it at the next mass to Satan. We're, you know, we're not drinking the blood of Jesus. We're drinking the blood of Jewish. Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. That's opposite of the millennium. Imagine that, that person. Honey, we're not taking a mark. I found some beans in the basement. Ooh, uh, we'll plant them in the back where no one will see us. One month, two months, three months. Four months, no beans. They got has beans. Thou shalt tread the olives. Okay, here, here's olives. Offer a thousand rivers of oil, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil. What's going to happen? You're going to be found out. It's going to be taken over. It's going to be taxed. It's going to be stolen. You're going to go drive to work or somewhere. Your neighbors go, oh, hey, thank you. look at this, Mars. Or it's going to go bad. Something. The Bible says if all a man not eat, I mean or not man buy or sell without that mark. You're not gonna get away without getting that mark. Sweet wine. Gideon, when the angel visits him, he, he, he's back around the corner. He's got a little wheat field there. Hiding. Got some grapes. But you're not going to drink the wine of them. Why? Didn't Joel say the caterpillar, the, the, the palmer worm, and the other worms are going to come in and destroy everything? That scorching sun in the tribulation is going to burn up your plants. You're going to get crispy raisins. You can't eat the raisins. For the statues of Omri, now these are wicked and idolatrous kings. Arcad. The laws. Not God's laws. Omri's law. And all the works of the house of Ahab. You know who Ahab was? His honey pie was Jezebel. Jezebel sat at a table with the prophets of 400 of Baal. Now, this is going to bring 
the Assyrians into Israel. But things haven't changed in Israel. Baal is still there. The Queen of Heaven is still there. You stupid Baptist, pay from the Queens of Heaven to show you this is where Jesus walked. This is where Mary... Queen of Heaven called the, 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 the Catholics. And you walk in their councils. You, you, their religion. Those religions are not gone. They are still found in the Catholic Church. They're found in the Baptist Church. You want me, you want me to tell you a Baptist Church here in Daytona B that has the, 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 the daily bread of the Catholic Church? I, I assume that this is not the only Baptist Church that's got the daily bread. And style, you can't say nothing about the Catholic. Oh, yes, I can. I grew up Polish Catholic. Rebuke and exhort with all long suffering in season now. All right, that's enough style. What? You don't want me to quote the Bible? You don't want to. You pick up that daily bread, you're going to see some Omri and Ahab stuff in there. I bet you some of your wives put that makeup perfume like Jezebel paint in her face. Oh, you paint your face in some of these BBSs and some of these bears. My sister took took my niece and nephew to a church fair, and I saw little kitties getting their, their faces painted. Jezebel. I shall make them a desolation, nothing, emptiness. And he has this thereof a hissing. That's what I do. I hear all this. <clears throat> Somebody's, I want to smack them across the face. The Bible says, be angry and not. <clears throat> Let God get the rod across their face. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. You're not going to get away with your sins. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're Baptist. I don't care if you're American. I don't care. I don't care if you're Jewish. You're involved in sins. You're going to stand before God one day. And you will give an account. Unless you had confessed. And God has forgiven you. And has cleansed you. Plain and simple. 